Really? Maybe you should call the psychic hotline and find out what Latoya thinks. John Davidson was on TV. Uh-huh. Oh, I could just lose myself in his dimples. Right out loud, Maureen, you could lose yourself in an elevator. Helen, aren't you ever gonna let me live that down? <laughs> about buying a house? Nope. I'm going to build one. A tree house in the Dutch gym on that vacant lot behind the library. If I can't figure out whether to go with something classically American like Frank Lloyd Wright or something more international like the House of Pancakes. <laughs> well, I'll see you. Bye. Bye. See you Bye. later, Bye, Herman. Oh, my God. Listen, don't everybody look at once, but I'd swear on a stack of my grandmother's old Vicky Carr albums that Cynthia Gibson, that movie star, just walked in here. No, I said don't look at once. <laughs> yes, Harlan, I think you speak for all of mankind. Just because she is a big movie star does not mean you have to pop all your popcorn. She's right. Come on. Everybody go back to what you were doing so she doesn't think we're a bunch of starstruck hillbillies. Okay. <laughs> but first, I'm gonna go meet her. Marlene, you don't embarrass me. Oh, no. Wait for me, honey. <laughs> Hello, Miss Gibson. My name is Marlene Eldridge, and I I'm just a, a huge fan of yours. <laughs> Why, thank you, Merlene. It's always nice to be recognized. I, I will never forget you in the Forever Mistress. And I always wondered, whatever happened to that child that you had with Robert Mitchum? <laughs> oh, that was just a movie, Merlene. And he was just a child actor. He's all grown up now and probably holding up a liquor store as we speak. <laughs> Don't blame yourself. I'm, I'm sure that you and Robert raised him as best you could. <laughs> On to go, Marlene. Oh, I loved you with Barbarella. Thank you. Uh, that was one of my easier roles. I let Jane Fonda do it. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Miss Gibson, uh, listen, I know people are always asking you for your autograph and everything, and I hate to bother you because you're as entitled to your privacy as anybody else is, but uh, would you... Um, would you blot your lips on my napkin? Look at that. Now they are trying to get that woman to suck on paper goods. I know, it's so embarrassing. Do you think she'll outline her hand on my menu? Just, no. just, just, no. just, 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 I want to go over there before somebody asks you to put her footprints in the mashed potatoes. All right, gang, 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 gang. Come, come on, let's just stop bothering the lady and, and, and go slobber somewhere else, huh? <laughs> Miss Gibson, it was a joy and an honor to meet you. Uh, and I'll never wash that hand again. Well, that's something you hate to hear your doctor say. Why, thank you, stranger. That was very gallant of you. Do you have a name? <laughs> well, my name is Cynthia Gibson. Uh, I'm nude wooden. <laughs> Well, nice to meet you, nude. <laughs> what an interesting name. Thank you. I'll just be going now. Back over there and sit down at the table. <laughs> Hello, Miss Gibson. The only thing I want from you is to ask you your order. How about some of your, your famous ribs? With pleasure. And, uh, anything else? Oh, yes. Wrap up the town to go. I beg your pardon? Evening shade. I love it. And I'm going to buy it. <laughs> Got my front porch swing, a glass of lemonade. A baby on my knee, I think I got it made. You'd best be believing, I'm never even easy shade. They got 10 cent stores, no locks on the doors. And everybody knows your name. They got Sunday school, the golden rule, and every day that passes is slower than molasses, and you can't help but smile, lying in the shade. 
So come on down and you'll be glad you stayed. Don't talk about leaving. I'm never leaving in the shade. You better believe it. Let me just get this straight. Now, you want to buy us, flatten us, and turn us into some kind of a neon nightmare? <laughs> of course not. I want to preserve evening shade and make it into a monument to the values of small-town America. Oh, I've had this idea for a long time. Of course, Kim Basinger beat me to it, but then I beat her to Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when I was driving through your town a couple of years ago, oh, I don't know, I just felt like I was home. You see, underneath this fame and wealth and incredible glamour, I'm just a small-town girl. But if you buy the town, where will we all live? I mean, will we just be on display in, in, in little glass habitats? <laughs> like, like, like those cave people in the Museum of Natural History? Well, I, I'm, I'm a little confused, too. Not as confused as Marlene, of course. <laughs> But, uh, where, where are we supposed to go? Why, nowhere. You'll all stay right here. You see, I see evening shade like Williamsburg, Virginia. Oh, real town. I think the most difficult thing you'll all have to face is you'll all be in my tax bracket. <laughs> <laughs> I can live with that. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I say if Miss Gibson lost this town, we just give it to her. Oh, sure. Who's with you? Let's get your hands. Sit down. Sit down. What? How long? We, do, do we have a few hours to think about this? We don't have to give you an answer right now, do we? No, take your time. I have a million details to work out. First thing I need to do is find Ava Newton. I hear she's the best lawyer in these parts since Hillary Clinton. Oh, oh, oh. I'm Ava Newton. <laughs> Tell you, I just loved you in hot Hawaiian holiday. Oh my gosh. I, I, I memorized all your lines. I made all your clothes. On costume day, I went as you. Only I got my theme day mixed up, and it was really formal day, so my class picture was taken in a coconut bra. It was actually very attractive, but it was a little itchy. Well, I do need a sharp lawyer to do those title researches. Oh. Um, I would prefer it if you wore a suit. Okay. Oh, I have suits. I have lots of suits. Honey, tell her how many suits I have. I have blue suits, green lots suits, gray suits. Breathe, I have lots of breathe. suits. I can't. Where do we start? Well, I'm primarily interested in Town Square. Okay. And Main Street, of course. Oh, and then there's that darling place just outside of town. The one that looks like Gone with the Wind. Harlan? Huh? I think she means Harlan. Oh, 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 excuse me, Miss Gibson. Uh, that place you referred to as my home. I, I built that with my own hands. And we lived there for over 30 years. And when we die, we intend to lay side by side in Tara's eternal shadow. It's not for sale. I'll give you 300 grand. We'll leave the keys on the dresser. <laughs> oh, honey. I'm almost finished with this title search. Mm -hmm. I've got to tell you, I've been having so much fun. I was in Cynthia's hotel room the other day, and do you know who called? Richard Gere. Richard Gere. <laughs> and we had a conversation, and, and, and tell me if you've heard this before, but do you know what she calls him? Richie. Richie. Yes. Yeah. And Harrison Ford has a dreamy voice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but did I tell you that Shannon Doherty tried to pick a fight with me? <laughs> yes, you did. And don't worry, dear, I, I think you can take her. Check it out. <laughs> no vent. Well, how do I look? Great. Like you were squeezed out of a tube. <laughs> Miss Gibson means Cynthia. Yeah. She bought it for me. I'm working for her now. Oh. Yeah, she needed somebody with some street savvy. You know, somebody from the hood. Well, what is your job, homeboy? You can I'm a right arm. Mm. Eight to count. Number two man on the deal team. Yeah. She's the sex. I'm the muscle. <laughs> I also make the coffee and walk the dog. Hey, listen. You guys are getting ready to see the very first set of plans for Cynthia Gibson's Real America. This is getting out of hand. This place is getting so big, it's going to have to have a chair in the UN. Uh, that's, hey, that's me. Oh, you got one. Yeah, I'll oh. be her calling me. <laughs> Hello, Miss Gibson. Hello? Uh, I don't fucking have 
like it yet. But I'll tell you what, uh, yeah, if I rush over to the hotel, I bet I can get there before she hangs up. I'll see y'all later. Is my tie straight? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Bye. This woman is trying to create another Disneyland. I mean, she already has Dopey. Uh, honey, no one is more dedicated to maintaining the integrity of this town than Cynthia. But if you're so worried about it, why don't you go talk to her? She's great. She's just like any other small town girl. That's right. She puts her Mercedes on one leg at a time. Just like us. This souvenir, I think, will be a real big seller. See? There's the main street with a barbecue villa and a little ponder holding teeny wheels. <laughs> but, Merlene, darling, there's no snow. Oh, well, of course not. I mean, it rarely snows in evening shade. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to mislead anyone. <laughs> and to think I used to just fly over people like you. <laughs> Time to go. I've got to go and shellac my macaroni mosaic. <laughs> Potter. Look at her. She acts like this is her office, like she owns the place. Funny you should say that. No, no, don't, don't tell me. You didn't sell the place. Oh, it's not a done deal, but maybe if I lay it on thick like Holland about wanting to be buried in the shadow of my deep, fat fry, I could get another 50 grand. Well, what are you gonna do, retire? Oh, not completely. Cynthia says that I am a piece of Americana. People are gonna pay money to come and watch me fish. Hi. Oh, hello there, nude. <laughs> Actually, I'm, uh, it's kind of embarrassing. My name isn't uh, Nude, it's Wood. I know. Ava told me. <laughs> but don't worry about it. My real name's Fritzy Schnitzer. <laughs> well, what can I do for you? Well, it's, it's about these plans, you know? They just seem to be getting bigger and bigger and, and uh, a little too flashy for evening shade. You're right. Oh. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. No, we need something much more down to earth. And yet, at the same time, inspirational, even heroic. Oh, are all these pictures of you? Well, yeah, most of them, I guess, but not the ones with the pom-poms. Those are the cheerleaders there. <laughs> See, uh, after I retired from professional football, uh, Ava and I wanted to move back to Evening Shade because it's such a special place. We want to keep it that way. Well, I know something that just screams special. What about, and this is just off the top of my head, but what about a Wood Newton Museum? <laughs> <laughs> a Wood Newton? You, you gotta be kidding. Of course not. I mean, you're Evening Shade's most famous citizen, right? Well, other than the chicken that ran a four-minute mile, he was invited to the White House. <laughs> oh, I've got it. What about a 60-foot-tall Wood Newton statue at the entrance of the museum. Boy, a museum and a 60-foot statue, that seems a little self-centered, don't you think? Ah, don't be silly. I named a whole park after me, and I'm not self-centered. <laughs> you are a role model in this town. Kids look up to you. Well, they have to at 60 feet. <laughs> I know you're a modest man, but... You have a responsibility to those kids. And if you're going to be a role model, you might as well be a big one. Yeah, but 60 feet. Well, how about 50 feet? Better? Gee, I wouldn't feel comfortable with anything over 40. <laughs> hey, everybody. Guess what? Mr. Ember, give me an old tire. Oh, darn. That's what we were going to give you for Christmas, an old tire. Well, I was going to use this one as a swing for my treehouse, but I can always use a spare. Hi, honey. Hi, sweetheart. I was talking to Wood. Oh, sorry. I was just going with the flow. Could we try to get focused here? We got some real problems. This deal's falling apart faster than a leper in aerobics class. This isn't going to affect Daddy's statue, is it? Yeah, this is not going to affect Big Woody, is it? Oh, I'm afraid Big Woody is in big trouble. We can't seem to find who the owner of the property is. And it's right in the middle of everything. Without it, we're dead in the water. Oh, that's the vacant lot where I'm building my treehouse. Mm. I can tell you who owns it. You can't. 
can? Who? Me. You own this property? Yeah, old Miss Woolly left it to me for finding her teeth in the garden that time. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Because <laughs> you've been looking all over for me, and you found me right here. <laughs> I feel like Waldo. <laughs> now, you're going to be a very rich Waldo yeah. if you sell that property. Oh, I'm not selling it. That wouldn't be fair to the kids that play there. Not to mention several rabbits that still call it home. Well, i got to go hang my firestone. <laughs> When Cynthia finds out about this, that Firestone's not going to be the only thing hanging from that tree. You know, for a guy that lives in a tree, he makes a lot of sense. I know. Saving a space for small children and rabbits? You can't argue with that. Yeah. Even Big Woody couldn't argue with that. I just can't believe I have to go to this much trouble for some puny little vacant lot. Oh, these are still too small. Next time you break in a pair of shoes for me, would it kill you to wear thick socks? I'm sorry, Ms. Gibson. But I was cursed with narrow heels. getting what I want. <laughs> you know, I once made Charlton Heston call out for his mommy. <laughs> oh, I've done it all, and I've seen it all. Oh, wait. Well, maybe not. <laughs> uh, Nub, mm -hmm. next time I see you, you're either gonna be a very wealthy man, or you're gonna be a chalk outline on this carpet. <laughs> Hello. I'm Cynthia Gibson. I'm so delighted to meet you. Hello, I'm Nub. Nub. <laughs> Nub, what an enchanting name. Is it a nickname? Well, sort of. It used to be Nub with two Bs, but I shortened it because I felt it was pretentious. <laughs> oh, I think a man like you could handle as many Bs as he wants. Thank you. <laughs> Say, I've never seen furniture this nice except at the mortuary. I like to go there sometimes and just sit a while. Kind of reminds me of being in God's waiting room. You know, Nub, this couch could be a little slice of heaven for you. I've taken the liberty of chilling some champagne. Oh, no, thank you. I'm driving this evening. You know... All of my hopes and dreams are tied up in these big, strong, wagon-pulling hands. You could make me so happy if you would sell me your vacant lot. I hate to embarrass you, Ms. Gibson, but this dress ain't got no straps on it. I can't figure out what holds it up. <laughs> Don't you want to make me happy? No. I want to make you happy. This reminds me of when Ginger tried to get Gilligan to give her the last orange on the island. <laughs> you are one cool customer in up with two bees. Are you always so in control like this? Yep. Except for that time I ate something weird in the woods and forgot three whole days. <laughs> Okay, tough guy, you've got me where you want me. I need your land, or my project's a bust. So, what's it going to take? Well, I'm sorry, Ms. Gibson, but I'm building a treehouse on that lot, and there's nothing you can say or do. <laughs> Boy, are you a good sport. <laughs> And I was afraid there might be some hard feelings about me not selling it to you. <laughs> Are those nuts free? Now look, come on, Nub. Miss Gibson, she's getting ready to offer me a job where I get a blazer, 
a walkie-talkie, and a golf cart. You've already got your wagon. Now, don't deny me my golf cart. <laughs> Look at poor Nub over there. They're gonna eat him alive. Reminds me of that goat in Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, you know, as much as I've enjoyed talking to Richie Gere, I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this whole thing. I got a bad feeling, too, because there goes the bass boat. <laughs> Please give up that land, Nub. Don't make me big like a dog. <laughs> Harlan, where the hell is your dignity? Well, actually, I thought I sold it for $300,000. <laughs> Look, Nub has made his decision. We're going to stand by it. I'm not going to stand by him. He made the wrong decision. Was it? Well, Miss, Miss Gibson wants to make uh, Evening Shade a monument to small town values. Well, that's what it's always been, till now. I don't understand how we can sell this town anyway. I always thought Evening Shade was all of us. It'd be like selling a magic lamp without the genie. Nub's right. You want to preserve small town values, you got to value the small town. I suppose Coach is right. I mean, think about it. I mean, <laughs> the way we've all been acting, like a bunch of starstruck groupies. Oh, Miss Gibson. <laughs> Did you sleep okay? I told the maid to make sure there was no crumbs between the mattress pad and the fitted sheet. Thank you, Herman. You're obsessive and you agree with everything I say. I like that about you. I like that about me, too. Uh, Nub has decided not to sell, and we're going to stick by him. I'm afraid Evening Shade is not for sale. Yeah. Well, that makes my announcement easier, because I've decided not to buy. What? Mm -hmm. Disrupting your lives is the last thing I wanted to do. Besides, my friend Cher told me the real money's in infomercials. <laughs> Ta! No, no, please, wait, wait. What about me? I won't go with you. Oh, Herman, there's nothing in this world I'd love more than to take you with me. But we both know that that's absurd, because yes men in Hollywood are a dime a dozen. <laughs> well, love ya. Mean it. <laughs> Real estate will always hold value to some people. But it's the little things we do together every day that gives a town a spirit that's priceless. And Nub and his neighbors are a lot richer today, knowing that friendship and community are two things that will never be for sale in a place called Evening Shade. night you fell in love all over again with the saga of Woodrow Call returning to Montana. But the story is far from over. Be here tomorrow for part two of the all-new Return to Lonesome Dove. Now, Dave's World is next. This is CBS.